Hello, I'm Verde Arbusto, and this is the Schumann Resonance Harmonics channel on YouTube and on Facebook. Thank you for joining me. Welcome. Um, if you're new here, welcome. Um, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell next to it uh, to select the all notifications. Um, thank you for being here. Um, like, comment, share, and subscribe if you want your favorite content providers to be kind of percolating up there in your uh, regulars feed. Okay, so um, it's uh, what's today? Sunday. It's like uh, 10 o'clock at night. It's overall is a nice day, but it's very cold out. Um, it's wintry here in New England, but it's uh, it was sunny. It was a sunny day. Got a chance to get some work done today. Okay. Um, all right, so thank you all for the comments. Thank you for the love, the support. Thank you for the um, the subscribers on Patreon. Thank you for those who um, have, subscri have subscribed and have um, provided support through PayPal as well. Thank you very much. All, that, all of the money I get that comes in goes to the studio to make the sound better. Um, and thank you for my subscribers who have provided uh, the supporters who have uh, helped me out with the um, the funds for the equipment. Uh, that was a mouthful. Okay, so um, I just want to get into the literature really quick. Um, this is going to be a fairly short, uh, brief introduction. There's going to be a couple parts. Um, the first is going to be a simple, fairly simple, relatively short introduction of the basic material. And then the next one after that, we'll go into a little bit more detail of the same material, and we will go into more specifics and more detail of this. Okay. So what I have on the screen next to me or behind me is the basic elements to or some, the, mo the majority of the basic elements in a pictorial form of the um, Schumann resonance antenna detectors. Okay, so essentially what we have here is the signal conditioning path. So you see it's the induction coil, which is this over here. Okay, then there's a preamplifier. Then there's a filtering stage. Then there's a variable gain. And you see there's four filters here that they show you. And then the DAQ, which is the, um, uh, that's where the data is um, acquired. That's where the, it's processed, if I remember correctly. Okay. So this right here is a magnetic induction coil, which is that part right there. So the magnetic induction coil is the, um, the horizontal frequency. Whoop. It is the measurement of the, mag the magnetic portion of the electromagnetic frequency. And you can see all the copper on here, all the windings that are around the, um, the, the, the core of the antenna detector. All right, so it says magnetic induction antenna. Our magnetic field antenna consists of two identical back-to-back -back induction coils with new metal core material. And that's a brand name. That's a trade name of material that they use for this. It's an alloy. In order to achieve core alignment and excellent connection between the two induction coils, we used a clamp of mu metal sheet. Our antenna output terminals are connected to the preamplifier outputs. A plexiglass box is also used to protect the antenna and preamplifier stage mainly from moisture and humidity, providing also probability or portability, I'm sorry, and stability. Uh, through three SMA connectors, the preamplifier output as well as its positive and negative power supply is accessible. All right, so that's what it says. This is our basic induction coil. You have a good picture of this here. When I talk about the induction coil, you have a picture of this right here that you can go by. Okay, so this right here is a periodic, it's a, a, a weekly graph of the, the first harmonic, mode one, that they're showing you. That is the lowest of the, um, the mag magnetics right here they're showing you. So mode one is the first in the magnetic portion of this. All right, so mode one is, is the harmonic of the 7.8 harmonic. So they're showing you where they've measured the 7.8 harmonic, and see it's going up and down, up and down. This is not all of them. This is only the first harmonic of the 7.8 hertz resonant hertz. Okay, so this is showing you an up and down breathing pattern. All right, this is more of a breathing than the heartbeat. Because your heartbeat, you have the systolic, 
Dub dum, blub dub, blub dub, blub dub, blub dub. There's two, right? For the heartbeat, you got to remember there's two. Blub dub, blub dub, blub dub. Not this, which is. <gasps> So when we talk about the Schumann resonances as being the heartbeat of the planet, no, because your heartbeat has an in function and then an out function. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, which is you have four chambers that are at work in your heart. You got to remember that one pulls it in, sends it to the next one, which pushes it out. One receives it from there and then pushes it out. So there's four pumps in your heart. You need to remember that. Whereas the breathing, it's different. You have an in and then an out. Okay, so I just want to make that point. All right, so the human resonances are not the heartbeat of the planet. I'm just going over that once once again. I'm happy to say that as many times as it takes for people to understand that. They're two different processes. They're two different uh, circuits, and they operate in different ways. The heartbeat of the planet is what you would call inside. That's part of the DC, the lower DC circuit, of the planet, the Schumann resonances happen in between the lower DC circuit and the upper DC circuit of the ionosphere. And within that, you have the breathing of the Schumann resonances. Okay, so the next thing here I'm going to show you is this is a schematic diagram of the, um, the electronics of the antenna itself. Okay. So you see the input there, um, and these are the different um, the different symbols um, of the schematic diagram. I'm not going to go too much into it. I use this picture because it was neat, and I needed a picture there. Um, but I'm not going to go into it too much. I needed a picture there where my face would normally be. Okay, so that's sort of why I picture that. There's something you can see there. I don't know if it's clickbait. I don't think it's clickbait, but. Um, you know, it's um, it's useful, but I'm not going to explain it more because this is just it's entirely theoretic. So this right here, the schematic, is what backs, in theory, this um, hardware right here, uh, the um, uh, the filtering stage of the diagram of the Schumann, the filtering stage of the antenna of the Schumann resonances. Okay. All right, so I think that covers, um, that gives us a basic um, overview of everything that's here. Okay, let me, okay, I'm back. All right, um, okay, so what I'm going to do, um, I gave this some thought. Um, I think I'm just going to, um, the pictures and the images that I showed there at the beginning will be appearing later on in the, the article. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because this is a short and it's just an introduction video, I'm going to read through the abstract of this, which is relatively short. It's one paragraph, although it's kind of a long paragraph. Um, it's one paragraph, and then I'm going to close it out and publish it, and then I'm going to, I think, go, move on to the next one. All right. Um, you don't need to know that, but I'm going to do that anyway. All right. So the, the article that we're reading is a new portable ELF Schumann resonance receiver design and detailed analysis of the antenna and the analog front end. Okay. I This is my favorite article. I think out of all of the articles on the Schumann resonances, this one ranks up there my favorite. Because until you nail down the antenna part of it, you're not picking up any resonances. And the quality of the signal that comes out to you depends on the quality of the antenna and it depends on the processing that it took to get that signal okay so to me it's knowing about the Schumann resonances is extremely important from the perspective of knowing how the antennas work okay so this is why this particular article the, I have others on, on from the antenna makers that are equally that are maybe not equally but that are that are also good as well this one is an excellent article because it goes through all of the whole process of making the antenna, acquiring a signal, the electronics that go into it, the thought and all of that. So this is an excellent article. I haven't done a video on this before and I've talked about it in, I haven't done a standalone on this when I have talked about it in other videos before. So this is extremely important. This is one of those ones I point to the newcomers and I give this to them to, to see how the Schumann resonance works from the technical side. And this is what my place here is. 
I love this article because it focuses on the technical part, and that's what my focus is on this, to explain to you technically how the Schumann resonances work as in addition to the antenna and the detecting equipment that make it possible to see and understand the Schumann resonance signal. Okay. So this article is a great example for you to see how the Schumann resonances are required and the difficulty, the absolute difficulty in giving you a clean, clear signal. Okay. And so as far as I'm concerned, before we can move any further as, as the teacher, as the mentor, before we can move any further, we under, need to understand the antennas. Because people are saying crazy shit out there about the, the, the figures from, from uh, Cumiania, from Italy, the, you know, from, from, from th 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 what's going on there? Tomsk is lying because they're, they're, show they're not showing what these guys are. And I, don't, I frankly am, am done hearing any of that. Before I can go on, before we can go on, you need to know how the antenna work. It's just that simple. So this, this is going to be as relatively efficient and painless as I can make it introduction to the antenna system. Okay, so with that in mind, the abstract. <sighs> Take a breath. Mm. Okay. Schumann resonance oscillation detection is a complex procedure which requires customized and highly and hi customized and high quality measurement systems. The primary objective of this work was to design and implement a standalone, portable, and low-cost receiver able to measure as much Schumann resonance harmonics as possible. Sh Schumann resonance harmonics. Design as well as detailed analysis of the efficient induction coil magnetic antenna and the low-cost amplifying filtering chain is presented. The detection system includes two coils back-to-back, -back, resulting in a total coil length of 60 kilometers. The filtering and amplification chain exhibits a an experimentally measured total band pass gain equal to 112 decibels at 10 hertz, hertz and as low as 2.88 nanovolts over the square of a hertz equivalent input noise. In order to validate the new portable ELF Schumann resonance detection and monitoring system, we took measurements at various spots relatively free from man-made electromagnetic pollution. Results have shown very clear Schumann resonance peaks for the first six modes with 10-minute acquisition time. Okay, so 10-minute, where, where that's talking about here, the 10-minute acquisition time, really quick, this is your scan. Right on Tomsk, where you'll see those scan marks, they're just stripes like that. That is the acquisition data stripes. They're artifacts in the system that are, oh, I don't even know how to explain it. But that they're, 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 they're data oversampling stripes, if you will. I'm not sure if you know what that means. And there's a crossover between the two. It's not something's not lining up properly. All right, but that's where, what this, when we talk about those data stripe lines, that's what that is, is it's the acquisition time. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna go more into that. That's, you know, that's not exactly part of what part of this discussion is right now because I don't have the literature, number one, and number two, I'm just talking about this abstract here. I want to give you a, just a brief kind of introduction to what the acquisition time, the 10-minute acquisition time is, although I think for Tomsk, it may be 20 minutes, but I'm not sure. Essentially, what happens is it, it processes 10 minutes worth of a signal, and then it sends it. Processes 10 minutes, and then it sends it. So there is an overlap from when it has 
done the sample and the buffer is full and it's waiting to send it out. Okay, so somewhere in between the, the done, let's go, is a, a, a signal that's sent out. Full, let's go. Full, let's go. Full, let's go. So that, this is what I understand. This is just what I understand. This could be not technically correct, but this is how, how my guides have, have explained what is happening there. That in the overlap there between I'm full, let's go, and sending it, there's a, like a tick, a waiting. A um, and so something is not activating properly. All right, so that's basically what they had given me is the Tomps lines. All right. Okay, so this is um, legitimately a quick video. Um, I have introduced the topic. Um, I just want to make a short video. We're going to get this out, the antenna making um, video. And so the next one I will be going into more detail about the, the, the video itself um, and the details, and we'll look at the pictures. All right, so for right now, that this is um, a good place to stop. Thank you all for coming here. I appreciate your being here. Um, thank you all for your love, your support, and your comments. Um, and uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much, um, and everyone have a great and wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon, I think. Bye. Namaste.